you're not, you're not sure what's real anymore at some point, right? Because I think what I found, right, is we have such a passionate fan base and they really come out for two reasons. One, if they're obsessed with something or two, if they are furious about something, right? So it's such a passionate fan base. And so you kind of only get those kind of extremes of like, I love you, everything you do is amazing. Or why did you do this? That was terrible. Why are you still in this competition? Um, you know, so you miss that kind of real world mentality of like, you know, the other 80% of people who are like, that was a great show, you know? So I think you're missing a little bit of the, the nuance. Nuance, yeah. <laughs> people are actually reacting to the show. Um, but it's still exciting. And I'm at least grateful that we're able to connect with each other, at least virtually, you know, through Twitter or whatever, you know, it's, we can still kind of engage with folks. Um, so I, I'm grateful for that. But it is definitely weird. Uh, you know, I, I, I do have to kind of remind myself that it's a, it's a just, just a, a, a little bit of an exaggerated view of how things are playing out, but all valid. You know, I think that's what's so exciting about this season is there are so many opinions of it. Everyone has favorites for different reasons. Like all of us have a pretty loud and vocal fan base, which is so cool to connect with. And I'm just so excited to see kind of what happens for all of us kind of coming out of this because we've all been able to really show our drag, which is why we did the show. And that's amazing. We are losing some of the nuance, but there is this sort of feeling that like one day soon, fingers crossed, you guys will be able to go out and, and do your thing again. And it's going to feel like such a release and people will be so excited because they've been building up this excitement to see you for so long. There's an element of this where we're at least for the people that are in the middle of the country and maybe wouldn't have a drag show put on, I think we're able to see you a little bit more now, which is exciting too, just because we're so online. <laughs> yeah, it, that's, that's very true. And especially the international folks, you know, like people in countries where we may not go for maybe a long time, if ever, you know, are able to watch either us on social media live or on other platforms doing shows live, which they're able to connect with us like right away as they see us on TV. You know, if we would have been touring, it would have been only at those viewing parties. Um, so that's, that's another really great benefit, I guess, if you, uh, or I guess a positive way to look at this situation. But uh, yeah, I am excited to actually hit the road and see people in real life when it is safe to do so. You are such a beautiful representation of the Iranian LGBTQ community that we don't see ever in media. And I'm wondering how, how has that been reflected back to you since the show's been on? Have you heard from certain fans? That's actually been probably the thing that really has kind of kept me going. I mean, of course I'm excited to share my drag and of course I'm excited to be on TV, but it's the thing that kind of gives me a real sense of purpose is is getting messages from queer Iranian and kind of Middle Eastern kids across across the world who are seeing themselves finally reflected in some way on TV. People have said like, oh, I showed my mom this. My mom thought that drag queens were, I don't know, prostitutes or something, which of course sex work is, has always been part of the queer community as well, but just to show that like, or they, they maybe, maybe they're not, maybe they're, maybe they're, comedians, maybe they're thoughtful people, maybe they're uh, the different things that hopefully I was able to show on the show um, is part of why I did that. Because when I was growing up, there wasn't any of that, you know, the, the only things on TV around Middle Eastern folks was I Dream a Genie, which you saw, which is Barbara Eden, I love her, but she's not actually a Middle Eastern. <laughs> and, you know, or, or all of the stuff in the news, right? The Gulf War, 9-11, those were kind of the only representations we had. And before my time, it was you know, the hostage crisis, you know, so that's kind of, uh, that's kind of been the narrative around Middle Eastern folks in Western media for the last probably 40 years. Mm -hmm. So it was exciting for me to have this chance to show something else and, and not to be representing all Middle Eastern people, not to be representing all um, Persian people, just to be, this is me, this is who I am, this is what makes me tick. Uh, and I approach drag the way I approach drag. and it's okay. I think that was kind of the biggest message that I hope I was able to share with people is that being all of these things at once, it can be complicated, but it's also okay. Like, it's okay to not fully be at peace with your cultural history, the countries where your culture comes from and their repressive governments. 
and at the same time still want to celebrate those things, you know, celebrate the culture, celebrate the good parts of, of what you grew up with. Um, and it's, it's always, you know, people, some people are very confused, right? They're like, why would she go up on TV in a hijab when, you know, five episodes earlier, she talked about how there's a death penalty for queer people in Iran. And it's, all those things are still true at the same time, right? I, I want to celebrate people's individual religious freedoms and individual expression of their culture and their history. And at the same time, call out things that I don't think are right, that I don't think are okay, that I think are wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we can have those conversations. And if anything, right, hopefully that we can let people know that drag is an okay forum to have those conversations. You know, drag is a way to communicate. It's a way to express art and ideas. Uh, and it's, it can be whatever you want. Hopefully I was able to share that part of drag with an audience. You know, Je Jeff Goldblum had an interesting response to it. And I think the internet's reaction was pretty divided on that. What was, the, what was it like in, in, the, in the room then at that time? Were you a little taken aback or was it hard to not be in the moment? I was taken aback and I think that's kind of where you see the emotion come from when I'm kind of talking about the outfit because, and it wasn't so much, it, it really isn't about Jeff for me. Mm -hmm. It was about kind of what this outfit represents, why I thought it was important and that, you know, I had this opportunity to share that with someone who maybe didn't see that right away. Um, I think when you watch the episode, you're actually seeing Jeff encounter this kind of intersectionality for the first time, at least, I think in this specific way, live in person. Mm -hmm. um, and I certainly, you know, I'm not here to pass judgment on where he, those thoughts came from, why he thought those things or why he said those things. But I am here to say like, I am grateful that I had the chance to share why I was wearing this and what it was important mm -hmm. to me and, you know, let, I also want, you know, everyone's kind of feelings around that moment to be theirs. You know, everyone is approaching this from their point of view, what they know about Middle Eastern folks, what they don't know, what they know about Islam, what they don't know, what they, where they're coming from is kind of everyone's unique point of view in that moment. Um, and it is a topic with a lot of, a lot of layers, a lot of different kind of points and thoughts about whether or not this is okay or not okay, or whether or not this is appropriate or not appropriate. I don't know if he had ever realized that drag could be those things, mm -hmm. you know, that drag could be serious, that drag could make big statements. Um, so I, I was grateful that I got the chance to speak from the heart. And, uh, you know, of course it was emotional. Of course I felt, um, in that moment, I felt kind of a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. you know, of, of, millions of people who I felt could be represented in what I was wearing and wanting to do right by them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And right, it, it inspired a lot of hopefully positive conversation, you know, at, at least from what I've seen. So the other part that stands out to me in, in your journey on the show that feels so instrumental is is what we just saw in the the, the one woman show. Like the way, even just the way that you started off at one point we get some critiques from Whoopi and Rue and change it and make it more personal. Like that to me encompasses your journey, but also just what everyone's journey is on the show. Like trying to find yourself and always make that front and center. Did that feel like a big moment for you? That was a huge moment for me, you know, and it, it was also like a, a moment of real pressure from a professional standpoint, right? If I, if I say I'm this cabaret queen and I say I'm a queen who can do shows like this, you know, I was like, I really have to listen to what Whoopi is saying. You know, this is someone who has mastered this art. This is the career of someone that I, any of us would hope for, but certainly in the kind of drag that I do, like I was like listening with every, you know, breath of what she was saying because she's done everything that I could ever hope to do in my career. And so hearing all of those things, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. Like, don't worry about making it funny. Like, don't even worry about that. Like, don't, that's not really what, like, she's like, I can tell you're a funny person. So you'll find the humor in whatever it is you're telling me, but don't like, don't feel like you have to add a hat on a hat. You know, that was kind of what she was kind of bringing to my mind. And it was really eye opening for me. Um, you know, and I, it was scary too, right? I felt like I had already talked so much about my family and I was like, oh, I don't want to bore people. I don't want to bore Rue or the audience or whatever, you know, but 
her giving me that freedom and just saying, you know, just do what you do. You'll find a way to make it funny. I trust you. And she kind of just said, go fly. So later on when she said that she saw me fly, that was, that was like, oh, <laughs> like such a moment for me to just actually feel like I had not even done her proud, but done myself proud, right? That, that, that I could actually do the thing that I want to do in drag. That's what I want to do. You know, I want to be doing these cabaret shows, you know, and I'm finding new ways to do them in quarantine. Um, so that was such a big moment for me um, to be able to, uh, to have that. Have your parents seen the one woman show? I believe my mom has seen part of it. She, she never like quotes things specifically, but she did say, she said, she said, I'm really proud of you and where your career is going, but do you have to share this much of your personal life? <laughs> My dad, I think, is a little behind because my dad was trying to watch the show earlier on and he was like, I can't watch this when you're not on screen. Like, my dad only wants to watch me. My dad is, like, so supportive. He's like, so I think I just need to, at some point, just, like, download all the episodes and, like, cut them up so it's just, <laughs> just a package of me and then he'll watch it. Cause he's like, he's like, I don't, he's like, I don't want to see these other girls. Uh, I'm like, dad, you'll, you'll miss the show. <laughs> Is there a certain uh, guest judge that you felt most affected by? Like, who gave the best advice? Whoopi definitely gave me amazing advice. I think that this is stuff that I will remember forever. You know, just the unlock of, like, you know, like, it, it's such simple advice, right? Don't worry about what other people think. But, like, when you take it into something as simple as, like, this is supposed to be entertaining, like, and not being like, I have to entertain, but, like, <laughs> what do whatever it is that you do and you are enough entertainment as you are you know just like be yourself as often as you can i think that was kind of my unlock in general this season and it probably happened a little too late but i noticed that you know i got those big belly laughs from rue whenever it was those improv based mini challenges right so i think those were the things when i just kind of said whatever was on the top of my head and out my mouth and not even thought about it that's when i got you know the real connection to really her and making Rue laugh. So, you know, I think that's, that's a big learning for me, right? That you can kind of put a lot of preparation in and a lot of the work in, which I of course love to do. And then when you get on stage, just throw it all away and have fun. So I think that's kind of <laughs> the balance uh, I'm hoping to figure out as I move forward. Oh, of course. And it's not said enough, but your track record in the mini challenges is pretty strong. I gotta say. <laughs> She's won three, I basically won all, all three improv-based mini challenges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's something. But <laughs> Does it um, add up to mini challenge win? I think the answer is no. <laughs> looking back now uh, on the other side of the season, is there something that you wish you had brought into the season, whether that's like a physical piece, like a, a dress or a certain wig or, or even just a mental thing? I wish I would have uh, danced more like, <laughs> Leading up to, like, I should have, like, thrown myself into dance classes. Look, I, uh, I'm, the, I'm the oldest queen of the season. I'm not that old, but I'm 35 now. And I probably should have, uh, you know, warmed up these old achy bones a little. Uh, you know, <laughs> but I will say, uh, I think people have found my dad dancing um, at least entertaining. <laughs> I don't know if it's ever good, but. And relatable. I felt very seen in those moments because. Um... <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so I, I, I will not be pulling the Laganja Estranja and uh, parlaying this into a dance career. <laughs> Has there been any like celebrity interaction or have you had any really, anyone really cool reach out and tell you that they loved you on the show? I will say I have never been so gagged in my entire life than to see Ariana Grande tag me in a story. Yeah. And then I go to her Instagram profile and it says, follow back. <laughs> Literally, hey, who am I to not be following Ariana Grande? Like, to take away my gay, gay card right now. And B, uh, the fact that she even knows who I am was incredible. Um, and that, this was about the, she, she, um, posted about my uh, Stars and Stripes runway. So the fact that that runway was so impactful to the one of the biggest pop stars in the world was um, pretty incredible. <laughs> uh, so Ariana, I follow you now. I'm obsessed with you. I've been obsessed with you. I just 
I'm not as good at social media as I should be.